Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. Acadia National Park is located on Mount Desert Island off the coast of South Central Maine. The 47,000 acre park offers a wide range of things for the visitor to do, including hiking, camping, swimming, tide pooling, bicycling, and enjoying carriage rides over some of the 50 miles of broken stone carriage roads built in the early 20th century. For the past 15 years, Mike Carpenter and his daughter Emily have operated Carriages of Acadia, which give one and two hour rides through the woods, giving the passengers a guided tour of the park and its network of carriage roads and granite bridges. This week we're going to learn about the horses that Mike and Emily use in their business. Next week we'll go on a tour to find out more about this amazing park. You will want to come back. This barn was built in 1911. It's just gorgeous. It sure and is. they set it up this way, east and west, so there's always a breeze pulling. Okay. They thought nice. of everything. Yeah, nice. uh, most of my horses come from Holmes County. Okay. Uh, most of my horses come from a guy you probably know named Daniel Hirschberger. Sure. I bought uh, the first team we bought in 2008 when I got the contract were these guys. These guys have been here for 15 years. Wow. He's probably 23 or 24. Okay. He is probably 21 or 22. That's the best horse I ever put a harness on. Okay. The ox okay, but he's a little on the lazy side. Suffolk Belgian Crosses. They were on drafts for sale. I had no idea what I was doing. I was desperately looking for horses. I got the contract. I wasn't expecting to get it. I picked up the, the, the computer and I looked on and this drafts for sale. So what's this all about? And there's a picture of these guys out in his pumpkin patch with a guy Roman riding on him. And I always wanted a Suffolk. And you know how drafts for sale, they break them down by breed. Right. I had checked on the Suffolk and they were advertised as Suffolks. So I called him <coughs> and introduced myself, and, and of course it's Hirschberger's Bakery, and I said, do you sell horses? And he said, oh, I sell a few horses. So we got to talking, and I uh, said, well, I'll get back to you. So there was an older gentleman who since passed away who worked for us here, a veteran horseman, and he said to me, he was going to come to work for us, and he said to me, Mike, where are you getting your horses from? And I said, well, I think I'm going to buy a pair from a guy named Daniel Hirschberger. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> he said, I've known Dan Daniel. He said, I've known Daniel for 30 years. He said, you can trust him. Joe, I paid $5,900 for that pair of horses. 15 in, years ago? In, in, uh, yeah, 16 years ago. 16, right. okay. Okay. But my question to you, you're a horse guy, okay? So that means Daniel didn't pay a dollar over 4000 Right. What Amish farmer in his right mind would have let that pair of horses go for $4,000 in seven or eight years of age? Right. And, right. and not a thing wrong with them. Right, nobody. Every day I've been here, these, these horses have worked here. So that began the relationship with Daniel. The second team I bought was right here. Uh, again, sight unseen. I said, what else you got? He said, I got a black and a gray. I said, okay, what do you want for him? $4,000. Now, there's a catch in this one. This is a great story for you. This guy suffers from moon blindness. Okay. Okay? ERU, equine recurrent uveitis. So we got him here. We didn't know that. We paid $4,000 for this team. And they don't work anymore because of his hawks, not because he's totally blind. Wow. He's totally blind. Okay. He lost the sight in the left eye, and because of the ERU, we had it surgically removed because the, do the vet thought it was painful. Sure. And then I remembered, I don't mean to swear in your presence, a Draft Horse Journal article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From years before. I used before. to work for them. I worked for them a long I, time ago. I, I remembered the article somehow that talked about ERU, and I thought, what the hell? And I called out and I talked to Maury at that time, yeah. and I said, can you get me a copy of that article? So he got me the article. North Carolina State University Vet School had invented an implant. It's, a, it's an emulsion of cyclosporin. 
Okay. This is a great story for you. And I said to my vet, I said, do you know about this? He said, yeah, I've heard about it. It was experimental in those days. I said, where could we have it done? Because my daughter adores these horses. Just there's nothing in the world. I, she, if she had to choose between me and the horses, she'd take the horse, this horse. And he said, Tufts could do it. So my four thousand, my two thousand dollar horse, because a team costs four, had five thousand dollar surgery the second year, and he came home with a little IV line. And NC State didn't even charge us for the implant. Hey, be good, uh, because it was so experimental, and it kept his eye good for about six years. Then he suffered a detached retina. Nothing okay. to do with the ER. You know. Right, right. But I'm going to, I keep telling people that because I want somebody, there are horses going blind out there that maybe don't need to. Okay, there's two teams going out for the 945. So your team of suffix is this crossbred team. That's that the only pair of suffix I have okay. right now. I just yeah, sold yeah. a pair. I, they, they didn't work out, so I shipped them back. But if we're here another year, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, <clears throat> that pair of bays came from uh, Daniel, uh, Mayor and a gelding, uh, two years ago. This team did not. This team came out I, last year. I was really hurting for horses, so I found these in North Carolina. A guy named Dick Higby, who used to work at the school in New York. I can't think of where. Anyway, Gary is a retired farrier from upstate New York. Uh, this is his second year here. And Romain is my friend from up home. He's an old French Canadian guy who loves to drive horses. Okay. Those Pertrins crossbreds? Those uh, Pertrin Morgan the, or something? The, the bays? I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm guessing Pertrin uh, Belgian crosses. Okay, yeah. okay. In the old days when I was a kid growing up, we used that's what we used to get was bay horses out of right. Pertrin and exactly. Belgians. Exactly, yep. yep, exactly. I grew up on a small farm up in northern Maine. We used horses until, oh gosh, in the early 60s. My dad was a farrier. He learned how to shoe horses before he learned how to farm. And in the 30s, he shod for the Genesee Brewing Company. Really? Wow. He shod the 12-horse hitch for wow. 37, 38, and then his first wife died very suddenly in 39. He was living out in Rochester, New York, and they were here. My father, in the 1960s, I'm very proud of this, uh, the Anheuser-Busch was setting up their brewery in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Okay. And they wrote to him. Now, he, was, he laughed about it because he was in his 60s at that point. Apparently his name had surfaced somewhere, and they wanted to know if he was interested in auditioning for the job. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. This is probably the second best horse I ever laid a harness on. Daniel Hirschberger, again. A little, little sensitive. Uh, used to be extremely nervous. Probably had some bad treatment before we got him. Sure, sure. All horse. Just, just, just you know, Susan could lay right down there on the floor. He's just a great, great animal. This boy came from uh, the sale in Dover. A uh, horse trader out of North Carolina bought him, and uh, then I, uh, Buddy Cocker, and then I bought him from him. Good boy, aren't you, Charmer? How many head altogether then? We got 20. Promise, promise you won't tell my wife? Yes, sir. She yeah. thinks I've only right, got right, four. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Yep, I hear you. We're working 22. You can't have them all in the same place at one time. You gotta keep yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but before I got here, all I had were Clydes. I don't know why I got started in Clydes, but I did. And I had a pair of Clydes, and I used to, used to tell people the reason was you could have a whole, whole herd of Clydes, and they all look alike, and as long as you could never get them in the same place. He came from Daniel. This is Willie. Hey, buddy. Uh, he's been here quite a few years. We're very careful when we get our horses because we've got so many people. We do with a lot of people what we're doing with you. Right. Just bring them through. They don't have time for a ride or whatever, especially sure. if they've got kids. Bring them in. Take them in with Duke. Take them in with Charmer. Uh, <clears throat> this team came from Danville, Ohio. Uh, Irvin, a guy named Irvin Hirschberger. They've been here for 11 years. Nice pair of horses. I mean, bringing people in here, you're kind of being an ambassador. Oh, absolutely. You're, oh, you're that's showing people that might not have otherwise ever be around a horse. When we... When, when, when we got the contract, one of the things I said in my proposal is that I would have, I would do my best to have a representative of every breed of the major, the five major breeds of the draft horse. And we've been able to do that. Right now we only have one Clyde. We lost the mate to the Clyde. This big team, uh, real, hey buddy, 
a four and five year old came out of Irvin Hershberger. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. Hey, try to bring back the same number, okay? I don't care if it's the same people or not, I already got their money. <laughs> so every, every carriage ride goes up this road. There's your star, there's Tuco. He's probably 18 now, so we lost his mate, Gus. And then we had this pair of horses, you remember the chipmunks, Alvin and Simon. Well, this is Simon. We had Alvin, and he twisted a gut, and we lost him two years ago. So this is our ecumenical team. Both have some age on them. Hey, you remember him? He probably took your picture at some point. <laughs> That's actually one of my favorite pictures. Oh, it's a lovely ben picture. Ben coming down towards the, exactly. the landing. It's just yeah. the, and, it's just, and I bought them from Ben because he was moving on. And, uh, yeah. And... Uh, no, I, I, I like the Suffolk. I, I think, think the world of Ben Burgess. Yeah, He's very great, nice. Great, great He guy. came up here and he spent, oh gosh, he spent about a week here just to get the horses acclimated. He wanted to make sure that they were, that they were settled in yeah, and all that. Sounds like him. You know, the great thing about uh, my relationship with, with Daniel is he'll take them back. Okay. If they don't work out. Sure. I have sent over 15 years, I have sent three or four horses back. Sure. They didn't work out for whatever. These boys came from Daniel. Hey. Yo, buddy. We got them from Daniel. They're only four. They're still growing. They work really good on the, on the trail, on, on the carriage ride. So you see the wheelbarrow full of poop. So one of the things we have to do here, part of the contracts, we have to go clean the roads. So okay. I was out there, that's my truck. When I'm here, which is typically only the weekends, um, I go out about six o'clock in the morning and drive around with that truck and pick up all the poop on the 10 miles of roads that we use. And then on the other side of the truck is a big piece of chain link fence that I dragged behind the truck to smooth out the ruts. Okay. Unless the weather's really bad, the horses all go out at night in the two horse paddocks. Um, the National Park Service built us this carriage barn. We didn't used to have that there. Uh, that's real handy. So after the drive, they go down, drop the passengers off, come back and pull through and, nice. and park. Yeah, yeah, it works that out. That is nice. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a pretty nice operation, it really it's, 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 it's very stressful. Hi, finding enough people to work is, right. is probably the biggest thing. Right. We have to take people like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's hard to find people to work. So Sarah came here last year, never having, am I correct, never having driven a horse? Had you driven at that point at all? Uh, yeah, I'd driven, I'd learned to drive working in Yellowstone. But, but, but most of the young people we hire have horse. We never hire anybody without horse experience. Sure, saddle but, horses. Probably. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But right. they, if they got horse sense, that helps a lot. Absolutely. Of and we bring them in and we put them out two at a time. I think we're super. We're super big on safe. So she just. Uh, we've got the, the nine o'clock ride. The one hour rides coming down the hill. We never hook a horse, unhook a horse, load a carriage, unload a carriage without a header. We learned that from experience. You bet. And we never send anybody up that hill or come down that hill without walkie-talkie communication. Sarah just came down the hill. She had gone up for the 945. So when she gets to the top of the hill, she's in charge. Nobody's coming down. This is the only place, you'll hear this on the ride too, this is the only place in the carriage road system where you couldn't pass two carriages. But it's very steep and very narrow. Okay. So we need to get to the top in a hurry, and then we can kind of relax a little bit. So we learned the hard way that we send people up with a walkie-talkie. But the biggest, probably the same biggest single problem here is to find people to work. And we need, in the middle of the summer, we need probably eight drivers a day. 
So with time off and everything, it's, you know, we need 15 people here who can drive or, or go along as the guide. And most of the carriages will have two people on them, uh, two, two, uh, you know, two people that are capable. Right. You know, you're going to have incidents. These are great horses, and they right. know the drill and all that. But, but they're horses. But they're horses. That's right. 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 Um, <clears throat> um, and you got precious cargo. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, and as you'll see as we go along the carriage ride. I mean, you can look off the side right. of the carriage, and this is Mary and Moses. Uh, so in 2000, am I going to mess you up if I talk? No, no, yeah, it's fine. Interesting no story about them. We had a young woman who worked for us for years, and just a wonderful kid. She started here when she was 15, grooming horses. And, in 2000, and, and then she's moved on. She works for the Jackson Lab downtown now, and she's married with a child. And so in 2020, 20, did you bring them all back? I think so. Smile. You're on camera. Uh, we thought we were done. And Colleen has literally be, almost become like a, a child. So I gave her that pair of shires. She loved that pair of shires. I gave them to her. And then we came back for her. So now I rent them back from her. <laughs> I pay her so much a day. <laughs> but she takes them for the winter. And she comes in on, they're off on Sunday typically. And so she'll come, on, uh, she'll come in on Sunday with her, with her daughter and her father and her mother. And they go for their own little carriage ride. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've had... We've met so many nice people here. I mean, people coming here are on vacation. Right. They're in good spirits, mostly. You know, right. I, I, I'm pretty good, maybe because I was in politics, I'm pretty good at reading my audience. Sure. I know who I can pick on, who I can't. I, I never had much to do with the horses growing up. Northern Maine used to be, I mean, that's coming from Wisconsin. Northern Maine used to be one of the preeminent potato-producing parts of the world. Right. Red River Valley of Wisconsin was our main competition. We never, who, nobody ever heard of I, uh, Idaho, Idaho back right. in those days. Right. You'll hear the story on the carriage ride. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, we, we raised, we raised uh, potatoes with horses. Okay. Uh, we, 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 we dug with the horses. We, we, we didn't plant with the horse. We had an old tractor. So it was kind of a mix and match but thing. But you killed the them end. with the horses probably. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we did our haying and uh, grain and all that with the horses. And my dad was, a, my dad was an excellent teamster. He, you dug he, them he, with a potato digger? Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. But, 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 yep. but, 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 <laughs> I can still hear that old one, one lunger going. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just kind of have always been around them. And then I got out of them. I had saddle horses. My daughter showed saddle horses going up and I got out of the big horses. And then I kind of had an itch to get back in. And I never thought I'd be doing this at this point in my life. Well, you love the horses. I do. I love You the love horses. this natural world that yeah. you're in here. Yeah. And you yeah. love people. Yeah. And I love promoting the horse. I mean, yeah. I tell people on the carriage ride, you, you know, these are big draft horses, you know, and, 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 and probably where you live today, once upon a time there were some trees. And a guy right. come along with a saw and cut the tree down and hauled it out with a pair of horses. We yeah. owe the draft horse a, a tremendous, oh, yeah. tremendous amount. And uh, you like that the second team that's coming down, it's a pair of uh, <clears throat> Belgians. We call them the Rones. They're small. Uh, I got them out of Moore, Montana. I can't think of the name. I saw them on draft horse, uh, drafts for sale, and I just like the looks of them, and they turned out to be a really nice little pair of horses. See, that's how we do? Yep. Pull in there, and you'll see on the carriage, every carriage, on the back of the driver's seat is a sign that says, if you've enjoyed the ride, you may kiss the horse and tip the guy. And it works. Most of the time. Sure, sure. If you leave them laughing, if you give them a good tour, yeah. they are... By and large, pretty sophisticated. They don't want you to make fun of the Rockefellers or make fun of the, the history is important here. If you're familiar, if you're grandchildren, you may be familiar with the Disney movie Frozen. Sure. Well, this is Olaf and Sven. <laughs> Aren't they a pretty little pair of horses? They are. They're nice little pair of horses. Are those American creams? No, they're, they're Belgians. They are, okay. Yeah, little yeah, round I can Belgians. see the brown ears. Yeah, I see that. Oh, Mark's driving. This is unusual. <clears throat> Hi. Oh, hello. Smile, you're on candy camera. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine. 
where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Uh, my name is Emily Carpenter. I'm Mike's daughter, and I'm the manager, day-to-day um, -day manager, co-owner of Carriage Civicadia. And you've been doing this how long? Um, this is season 15. We get to meet, you know, a lot of people that either have no idea that this is here or no idea about the carriage roads. Um, they haven't really come across that in their research when they come to the park. So um, they, you know, when they get here and they're able to get a carriage ride, you know, they're just kind of enamored with what went into it and why it's here and, and the history of it. So it's really cool um, to get at least a fraction of the people that come here to understand like what all of this was done for and why it was done. So, I mean, we're interacting with a ton of people out on the carriage roads, um, mostly bike traffic, which that is, you know, a whole, um, that can be challenging, especially now with the e-bikes. Um, most people want to be good and respectful, so yeah, we do try to use, you know, be an ambassador. And also with our customers, um, I tell all of our new people whenever we're training and stuff, like, especially what's going on in the carriage industry kind of everywhere now, is that we are very lucky. Um, we um, are able to educate people on how to tell if other places are taking good care of their horses, right. um, that they're not all bad, right. um, that's not, I mean, most of them aren't bad, but like, right. you know, it's every individual operation, just like it's every individual horse owner, dog owner, whatever, um, but to not lump everybody in, like, you know, because um, we have a lot of friends in the carriage industry and other cities that aren't so lucky and they don't get to use, to have that educational um, time ahead of time so we right. try to educate them on like how much they're eating how much they're working that it's actually not hard for them they love it we've got quite a few horses here that hate not working and are very cranky when they're not working right. and but people that have no um, horse or agricultural background don't realize that they don't realize that they want to do this so we try to use that as a to try to help going forward for wherever our customers go from here that they can kind of make educated decisions on their own instead of just listening to other people. We try really, really hard. Obviously, we're in the public and we want everybody to have that, um, but the horses are number one here um, over everybody, over ourselves at times, right. um, but they, they come first right? Um, because without them, we're not able to do anything and they are working their butts off for us and they need to be babied, in my, in my opinion. Um, so in a lot of ways, we aren't very good business-wise as far as that goes because they could do more. Sure. Um, we just don't ask them to do more. Right, right. So I am the one that some people would say is really nervous and really um, particular on how things are done because of things that have happened or I've seen other people do and I'm like, oh, we want to avoid that. And being in such a public area, um, we want to avoid as much as possible because all it would take would be one bad thing and you know if some if the wrong person saw that or got that so um very very strict on procedures and and um you know heading and making sure that somebody is holding the horses i mean we went years of of not having headers because most of our horses will just stand like puppy dogs right until some random thing falls off of a roof or right and it's just not worth it it's not worth taking that chance because then um, it cascades then it cascades we you know um we if there's another team in the yard um it's not just us it's not just you at home you know getting hurt which would be bad enough but it's it's out here or it's out on the carriage roads and then you've got bicyclists and and walkers right. and so yeah, it's it's there's a huge domino, huge ripple effect if something right. goes wrong. It's a very big area to try to manage if something is not going perfectly. Um, but we try to be really, really strict um, and have really good habits to avoid as much as possible. They're still animals. They're still unpredictable. Right. Um, and people out there are unpredictable that don't know. So you, you can only do so much. But we try really hard to be really, really safe in the yard, really, really safe out there so that we can avoid as much as possible of that. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. 
or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.